What's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today I'm joined with my friend uh, Coach Bo Ryan, owner of V23 Athletics and strength coach here in Denver, Colorado. And today we are talking accommodating resistance. So we're going to talk about chains versus bands, when to use each, how to program with them, and some key differences to know. But that being said, let's dive in. So in simplistic terms, accommodating resistance is going to be resistance that you're adding on to the resistance you're already doing. So for example, that will be the chain and bend here. And so essentially, these are designed to challenge you additionally through certain ranges of motion. So a lot of folks will use these to challenge different positions, add a little bit of an overload-esque feature to their lifts. But now let's talk about some key differences to note between chains and bands. All right guys, so the very first difference between our chains and our bands is our chains are gonna be what we call linear. So as we overload the top of the movement, 15, 30, 45 pounds, we know exactly how much chain is gonna be alleviated at the bottom and what we have to drive through. So these 15 pound chains will always be 15 pound chains. They're super easy to use for beginners. It's smooth and it's very easy to manage. All right guys, so the second difference is our bands are gonna be much more non-linear. It's gonna challenge your bar path to a greater extent and the resistance is much more radical. So when we talk about the top, it's very difficult to gauge unless you have like an actual physics background and have studied the west side like Book of Methods. It's very difficult to gauge how much resistance is at the top when at the bottom there can be actually little to no resistance. So these bands are actively trying to staple you through the floor and you're having to force yourself to accelerate through that band tension all the way to the top. So the third difference I wanna quickly talk on is who should explore these types of economy resistance. So we will expand on this in our consideration and our programming section that's going to be timestamped down below but if you are brand new to accommodating resistance and if you're a beginner or if you're just a recreational lifter and you want to explore this style of loading chains are going to be your best bet they're very much easier to gauge regarding programming and they're a lot easier to program for both strength and speed because you know exactly how much weight you're getting with the chain and with the linear loading it's a lot easier i think for beginners to kind of understand okay what kind of stability components and demands is this going to put onto my current lifts and like is my form set in enough to actually use a comedy resistance with bands they're going to be very much more like intermediate or advanced lifter focus because this is not going to be so linear there's going to be a heightened demand on stability so you're going to want to make sure you have a good grasp on your form and then also regarding programming of bands it can be a lot more difficult to gauge how much resistance are you getting is it equal on both sides what is the goal of your programming so we often recommend saving bands for more advanced lifters who know exactly what they want out of the accommodating resistance and saving chains for a little bit more of that beginner friendly or recreational lifter who wants to start adding accommodating resistance for their training goals. All right, so three quick benefits that come along with using chains for your workouts is number one, if you are new to accommodating resistance, this can be one of your best tools for acclimating to the style of loading and getting used to how this is going to challenge you throughout your range of motion. The second benefit that can come along with chains is that if you're working on your maximal strength, this can be a nice sneaky way to provide some progressive overload without totally burying you with additional weight. So this will challenge you through a specific range of motion. So from a strength standpoint, it can be awesome for adding additional load without necessarily having to load up the bar and potentially create additional fatigue that you might not necessarily want to create. The third benefit is that if you're like myself and your sticking point is coming out of the hole and basically fighting through that top end part of your concentric or lifting portion of your range of motion, these can be great because as you come out of the hole, these are gonna add additional resistance nice and slow. So it's gonna challenge you progressively to work through that hip extension and knee extension as you lock weight out. So they can be a great tool for improving sticking points that are in that top range of motion for your squat. All right guys, so now let's discuss three benefits of using bands over chains. So the first one is gonna be these bands are gonna really challenge your bar pass. And we talk about how we initiate movement in the squat or the bench. These bands are gonna give you immediate feedback to ensure that bar stays directly over your base of support or your anchor point. So as soon as that deviates, you're gonna get immediate feedback. Second benefit is gonna be uh, for advanced lifters, we can train over speedy centrics where because these bands are ripping you to the ground, you're gonna actually accelerate down towards the ground or accelerate the bar down to your chest and then blast back through. So this gives you another element of increasing speed, right? We talk about intensity over time. So we can use these in three week waves. That third benefit is gonna be to actually develop maximal strength. So we can load these bands up and these will, again, in that non-linear fashion, really challenge the lockout for both of your back squat and your bench press. All right, so two quick mistakes that we see athletes make all the time when using chains in their squat is number one, 
having that chain weight hanging. You do not want the chain hanging. If you're unracking that barbell and your chains are swinging, you're not getting the full benefit of them or you're not really getting or optimizing your programming with them. So you want to have some of those links, at least one link on the ground before you physically squat that weight. The second mistake that we see lifters make is going way too heavy with the chains way too fast. So we talked a little bit about programming considerations, but something to keep in mind is that this is gonna change the dynamic of your lift entirely. And so if you go too heavy with chains, you might not actually be able to see like how you're going to respond and sequence your body accordingly with this accommodated resistance. So when using chains, we suggest starting a little bit lighter and then acclimating and getting better at the skill of squatting with that accommodated resistance because it will change your lift a little bit. And there's really no need to go super heavy with them right away before you fully acclimate to what your form is gonna look like with the use of chains. When we talk about two common mistakes that we often see athletes use in regards to bands is number one, like finding matching bands. As you can see, we use the like specific west side barbell bands and that way we make sure these bands are only used together. So when these bands aren't being used to squat, they are hanging up like in my office away from everybody doing mobility and couch stress with them. So it's very important, number one, that the bands you're using are, are always used together so that one doesn't get more loose than the other. Uh, the second thing is we often see athletes that don't make, that don't ensure that their base of support is in the center of the bands. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna force that bar forward or force you back, which is gonna increase your chance for injury and actually negate the benefits of using bands in the first place. All right guys, let's talk about up for chains. Now, one common error we see a lot is for people to just take chain and like sling it on the bar. We have to keep in mind that the only thing, the only part that's accommodating resistance is actually the weight that's alleviated to the floor. Anything else is considered straight weight. So we have our straight weight, we have our accommodating resistance. I'm gonna go ahead and have Jake jump on this barbell. So go ahead and address the bar. As we stand, what's gonna be important is go ahead and back out for me is that we have about one link on the floor so that when he performs his squat, go ahead down, you can see almost 100% of that weight's on the floor, go ahead and stand, and then rack. So remember, the only thing that's important is the accommodating resistance here. Everything else is straight weight. If you come in here, you can see the best thing that we use, this is 5 8 chain, these are 15 pounds a piece, and we get these straps from Elite FTS. The other thing we can use for a chain hanger is just use quarter inch chain, which is called a guide chain. And that guide chain will help you get surgical with how much distance you have for your chains uh, to go to the floor based on your range of motion. So now let's discuss setting up bands. So these are gonna be much more complex, kind of based on the height of the lifter. As you can see, one of the first things, one of the critical components here, is I want the band pulling directly down below Jake's base of support, which is gonna be his midfoot. We prefer to use band pegs, and I would have Jake step right in the center here. The other option, which you see a lot of, is people just going directly down to one pin or a heavy dumbbell. And again, when we talk about this non-lear approach with bands, this resistance is gonna change based on how tight this band is. So it's gonna be critical that if you do a three-week wave with bands, that you have the exact same setup every single time. So I'm gonna have Jake go ahead and address the bar. And as again, as he backs this up, what I want you paying attention to is the center between these bands is directly lined up with his midfoot. So he's gonna take his big belly breath, he's gonna go ahead down, and then accelerate through that band tension all the way back up. And as you can see where that band, you can go ahead and rack, where that band got very loose, there was actually very little resistance there. So that's when we talked about how radical that resistance can be. Bands are gonna be much less linear than our chains were. All right guys, so when we talk programming considerations for bands or for bands or chains, let's keep this simple. So when I'm programming for my squat, if I'm training maximal strength, I can use upwards of 40 to 60% of chain weight on my barbell. If I'm doing a three week speed wave, like as long as the percentage is within like 15 to 25% of your one RM, like that's totally fine. My rule of thumb for this is for every set of 45s, I use one set of these 15 pounds. These 15 pound chains on either side with this 30 pounds. So that's gonna give us on average 15 to 25%. For three weeks, I'll keep the chain weight the same and I'll add 5% from 50% to 55% to 60% of my straight weight on my barbell. And again, for, for beginners or intermediate lifters, when we talk about programming considerations for bands, I like to keep that simple as well to where we just talk about, I'm gonna use, if I'm developing maximal strength, I'll probably go upwards of like a perceived 
45 to 50% of my one RM back squat. If I'm doing a three week wave, my band tension with the setup is gonna be the same for three weeks. And I'll just add 50%, 55%, 60% of my one RM for straight weight. So that stays linear for three weeks. All right, y'all, a big thank you to Bo for all of the help here. I actually plan to have Bo on the channel a lot more. So if you wanna see more of Bo, let us know in the comments below. But hopefully this video helped answer some of the questions that you might have about using chains and bands in your squat. If you have additional questions, drop a comment down below. I'm also gonna drop Bo's info. So if you have additional coaching questions from Bo or you want a little bit of help, definitely DM him on Instagram. He's super good about getting back to you. But as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop a like on the channel. We'll see you in the next one.